With the Hyundai Tucson, you have a choice between a gas-only model, a hybrid, and a plug-in hybrid as well. The hybrid versions will get their own separate video. This one right here is all about the non-electrified version. So that leaves you with four trims from which to choose. So let's find out which gas-powered 2024 Hyundai Tucson is the right one for you. All versions of the gas-only Hyundai Tucson are powered by a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine. It produces 187 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque, and it's backed up by an eight-speed automatic gearbox. Front-wheel drive is the standard setup, but all-wheel drive is offered on all trims as an option. The fuel tank is 14.3 gallons, and that, along with the powertrain setup, will net you an EPA-estimated 28 miles per gallon in combined driving on the front-wheel drive models and 25 miles per gallon combined for all-wheel drive. The entry point is the Tucson SE. This model comes standard with 17-inch alloy wheels, LED daytime running lamps, turn signals and brake lights, body-colored side mirrors and door panels, and remote keyless entry. On the inside, you'll find an 8-inch center touchscreen, a six-speaker audio system, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and a pair of USB ports up front. As for safety features, this SE model comes standard with Ford Collision Avoidance Assist featuring car, pedestrian, and cyclist detection. You also have Blind Spot Collision Avoidance Assist as well. The starting price of the 2024 Hyundai Tucson SE is $28,585. If you want all-wheel drive, add another $1,500. Next up is the Tucson SEL. Here you add on a proximity key with push-button start. Both the front seats are now heated, as are the side mirrors, and the driver's seat gains eight-way power adjustability. The SEL adds dual-zone climate control, two USB ports in the rear, a wireless phone charger, and the rear lift gate is now hands-free. For an extra $2,500, you can add on the SEL convenience package, which includes leather for the steering wheel and shift lever, LED taillights, 19-inch alloy wheels, a power sunroof, and upgrades the center screen to the nicer 10 and a quarter inch display, while the gauge cluster is also swapped out for a 10 and a quarter inch digital display. Oddly though, you downgrade to wired CarPlay and Android Auto with the bigger screen. Hyundai is working to fix this, we hear, so this could change for the better down the road. The starting price of the Tucson SEL is $30,735. Once again, all-wheel drive is another $1,500 if you prefer. From here, we jump to the quasi-off-road-esque Tucson XRT. Essentially, you're taking an SEL with a convenience package and adding on side cladding, side steps, blacked out trim and wheels, and then adding on roof rails and a tow hitch as well. It looks kind of cool, but don't be expect to be running trails in Moab. For some reason, the XRT isn't listed on the Hyundai website as of the time of our publishing this video but it is referenced in their various pricing, specs, and features documentation. So we're including it here. And the starting price is $35,410. And yes, this one too is listed as being available with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Finally, we have the Tucson Limited. Once again, you take everything you get up to the SEL with the convenience package, but then you add on a full panoramic sunroof, dark chrome exterior trim, LED headlights, rain sensing front wipers, leather trim on the seats, eight-way power for the front passenger seat, ventilation for both front seats, heated rear seats and a heated steering wheel, and you jump up to the Bose eight-speaker premium audio system. The Tucson Limited front wheel drive starts at $37,845. So which one should you buy? The smart money here is on the Tucson SEL with that convenience package. You already get heated seats with the SEL, but then the extra package adds that nicer screen and a power sunroof. Or you can ditch that if you have to have wireless connectivity for your Apple or Android phone. Because don't forget the larger screen loses that wireless device mirroring, but a USB connection gets you back in the game, so it's not a huge sacrifice for the nicer display.